I wanted to show you guys some special techniques for glazing your coil pieces because these are larger than the pinch forms that we did in the first round of glazing. And I just went and picked up my fire glaze results on my pinch forms from Clark College. And I think they came out great. And the piece I think I like the best is this one right here. It has this great combination of the robin's egg on top of the Turkish amber. On this piece, this green background area is the clear on top of a custom green underglaze color I mixed up by mixing the blue and the yellow underglaze. And I use the cobalt on the inside. I just really like how much variation and how much information is on each one of these pieces. And so of course you're gonna refer back to your own glaze test as you go on and do more glazing for the rest of the term, but also you're gonna look at everyone else's glaze test too. Don't just look at yours, but go into that module where everyone is posting them and look at everyone else's. I think it would be good for you to have a uh, plan written out on a piece of paper for what you want to have on your coil pieces before you start glazing. I'm just going to do a rough outline drawing of this piece. This is just for me to keep notes to refer to when I get the piece back so I know what I tried on it. On the inside, I'm going to put some clear glaze on the outside, on the dots, I'm gonna have some blue and green underglaze. And then on this background area, I'm gonna have some of the white glaze. And if I change my plan along the way, as I'm in process of applying glaze, I can just change my notes. But this way, I have my intentions written out on a piece of paper and it's gonna help me while I'm in process of applying the glaze. Okay, so when you're ready to put the glaze on your pieces, again, you need to stir them up before you use them. This one has actually a little bit of standing water on top. So I'm gonna do a good job of stirring that up. Get all the sludge up from the bottom of the container. Now your pieces need to have some glaze on the inside, at least on the bottom, if you want them to hold water. If you don't have any glaze on the inside, water will seep through. And I don't think that's what you want to have happen. Although if you made something that you intend to use as like a planter for outdoor use, sometimes you do want the bottom of it to be permeable so that it can drain all right. But almost all of these pieces I assume you're gonna want them to hold water on the inside. And so there needs to be a glaze down in there. Now on this piece, I'm not gonna be able to see down in there. So I might cheat a little bit and just get some glaze down in this bottom part because after all, if I want it to hold water, I'm still probably not gonna fill it up all the way to the top with water. I might be just fine with only having water up to here for it to hold flower stems in, but I wanna make sure I have a glaze down here for that reason. And I also wanna make sure I have a glaze in this top part that I can see and not just have it look raw and unfinished on the inside. So since my paintbrushes are all too small to reach down in there, I made a special paintbrush extender holder just with this wooden stirring stick and I just masking tape my paintbrush to it. So now I have an extra long paintbrush handle and I'm gonna take some of this clear glaze and get it down in there. You want to glaze the inside of your pieces first. Do the inside before you do the outside. I can't really see what I'm doing down in there. I could try and get my cell phone flashlight down in there to see better. But if I can't see it while I'm applying it, then I'm not gonna be able to see it after the firing. So it doesn't really matter. I just wanna make sure that I have a little bit of glaze down there to help it hold water. It's important that you glaze the inside of your piece first before you put anything on 
the outside of it. This mostly has to do with any drips that you might make because if I drip now while I'm putting this glaze on the inside, I'll be able to sponge it off. But if I had had a glaze already applied to the outside and I tried to sponge it off, then I would wipe off some of the work that I had already done. So do the inside first. Just like when we did glazing on the pinch forms, you wanna brush on about two to three coats Hopefully you have a better sense now yourself of how thick the glaze needs to go on based on the first round of testing that you did. So I have a good coat of clear on the inside all the way down in the bottom to help it hold water and up here on the top where it's gonna show. I'm going to brush apply under glaze inside these circles. And I haven't decided yet, I may or may not put a clear glaze over the underglaze. I kind of really like how this blue underglaze looks without any clear on top. It's really bright. I like that color. And I like how it looks against this really glossy background area. So I might try and get a similar effect on this piece. The underglazes, if they're on too thin, they will be somewhat transparent. You'll be able to see the individual brush strokes. They can look a little streaky if they're on too thin. So I like to go over them several times. At the same time, I'm noticing that the material in this little plastic cup itself is kind of thick. It's sort of like jelly. I'm gonna add just a few drops of water to it to help it spread and flow a little bit. All of the glazes and under glazes that you have are water-based and sometimes they'll thicken up just from leaving the lid off for a little while. Now that I've gotten all the way around and dot number one has dried, I'm gonna go back over it again and I might go back around over all of these dots three times to help get the solid thick coverage that I want. And if I get some of the blue where I don't want it, I can come now with a sponge and just sponge it off of this background area. There's another way to enhance the textures on your pieces that I want everyone to try, at least in some part, on their coil projects, which is a technique called staining. Staining is where you go in with a dark color and sink it down into the texture marks that you have on the surface of your piece. And then you can go on top of that with a lighter color. So you get this effect where the recessed areas of your piece are shaded darker and it enhances the texture work that you've already done in the clay. I'm gonna do that on these smaller dots done here on this piece. And I'm gonna go in with some black underglaze and I'm gonna almost cover the whole surface, but I'm gonna make sure with this small paintbrush that I get the dark underglaze deep down into the nooks and crannies of the texture marks that I've made. And because I think I want things more interesting than just a flat black, I'm gonna go over it a second time with my green underglaze. And that's gonna give me a mix of the black and green together, maybe a darker green. And I think it'll be more interesting than just the flat black. The important part about staining is not so much how you put the color on, but how you now go and wipe it back off of the background surface area. So I'm gonna come with a sponge, clean sponge that I wrung all the water out of, and I'm gonna come over this background surface area and sponge clean the black and green underglaze from the flat parts of the surface. And it's gonna leave that darker color stained into the circle dots that I made. So if you're doing this technique, especially over a wide area, 
you'll find that you're going to have to frequently go back and rinse out the sponge you're using to cleanly wipe your color off of the background. And you can use more or less pressure from your sponge as needed to wipe off more or less of the staining product that you're using. You can do this staining technique with anything that you have. You can do it with a glaze or an underglaze, something relatively dark, and that will help make those recessed textured areas look like they're going in even deeper. I'm gonna let this section dry for a little while before I put a glaze over it. And I'm gonna choose a lighter colored glaze. And so the green and black dots underneath are gonna bleed through and show through the lighter colored glaze that I put on top. But I'm gonna let it dry first. On this piece, I'm going for a slightly different effect. This piece has just a more clear sense of geometry to it seems a little more dramatic, a little more serious somehow than the other piece. So on this piece, I think I wanna glaze the inside black. Remember, glaze the inside first. Take care of that first. So I've stirred up my black glaze and I'm gonna go ahead and put this down in there, get some down in the bottom. Even though I'm not gonna be able to see it down in there, I wanna make sure that this piece is gonna be able to hold water. So I'm gonna put some glaze at least in the bottom part of the floor. Just like before, you wanna put on at least two or three coats of glaze, letting it dry thoroughly in between each coat. If you don't let the glaze dry in between, you won't actually be putting on two or three coats. If you don't let the glaze dry, you could just wind up swiping off more glaze when you drag your brush across it instead of accumulating the extra glaze coats that you want. So that's about one coat right there. And now I'm just gonna wait and let that dry before I put on additional coats. On this piece, I'm gonna stain these lines that I've etched into the corners with my black glaze. So again, I'm gonna go over the lines and with my brush, make sure that I get this glaze down into every crevice that I wanna have stained. The important part of the staining technique is how you sponge wipe off from the surrounding background area. How much you take off, how much pressure you use, how often you rinse out your sponge. My sponge water was getting really dirty so I got some clean water and now the black is coming off of the surrounding background a lot better. So I wanna to get to a point where I feel like I have enough black left down in the grooves, but also wiped fairly cleanly off of all the surrounding background. I'm also noticing that the surface of my piece is getting pretty wet right now. So even though I think I have a little bit more sponge wiping to do, it's probably best if I wait and let this dry. Even for just a few minutes, I'll be able to sponge it more cleanly. Now I'm ready to go around the background of these blue dots with the white glaze. Sometimes, when you're trying to brush glaze into very small areas like how I'm doing now, there's a tendency to brush it on too thin and stop after just going around once or twice instead of the closer to three or even four times that you need. Because I'm being careful going around the dots, I'm noticing that I have a very light touch with the brush on the piece and I'm putting on very thin application. So I know I'm gonna to have to go around several times in order to get a thick enough coat. I don't want this coat of white to look like it's made up out of a hundred little teeny brush strokes. I want it to just be a solid, smooth blanket of white. I think it's important on your vessels to think about 
the color relationships that you might be developing on them. A good place for you to have two different colors working together would be on the inside versus the outside of your pieces. You could think about the relationship between light and dark colors, between cool and warm colors, between two colors that are maybe close to each other, like red and brown, or two colors that are very different from each other, like red and green. It's really important that you write down everything that you put on your pieces, that you keep notes, very clear notes about what you have on each piece and in what order you've applied the glazes. You might not realize it, but these pieces are gonna be test objects for the next objects that you make in glaze in this class. Everything is a test for everything that comes in the future. So you need to keep accurate notes all the time of all the glazes that you're using on your pieces. On this piece, I have a nice thick application of the robin's egg glaze here on this top part, and I'm going over it with the blue underglaze. So I'm using the underglaze on top of a glaze. You can do that. You can use it underneath or on top. Just keep track of what you did because it'll look different depending on the order that you use the products in. I find that the glazes look best when they're layered with other colors. They just get more interesting and you're more apt to put them on thicker when you're layering multiple colors. So I recommend that you try combinations, try and pick something from the matrix that you like, try and copy it, try layering different combinations of glazes and underglazes together. You'll get more interesting, more rich, more varied results. So I think that both my pieces are done being glazed now. I have several different combinations of staining techniques, mixing underglazes together, clear on top, white on the background, robin's egg with something under it, robin's egg with something on top of it. I have a nice thick coat of glaze on the inside. I would say that my glaze thickness throughout is about as thick as a dime. If I was to scratch this chalky coat on here, it, I would be able to measure how thick it was. The glaze is on here an appreciable thickness all throughout. Generally speaking, you have to put it on thicker than what you first think. The last thing I need to do is clean the bottom. So I have some glaze drips that I've gotten on the bottom and you just have to sponge all of those off. Remember, it's not just cleaning the glaze off of the bottom floor. You absolutely need to wipe the glaze up in the air about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Sometimes it's easier to see it if it's on a clean background, either a piece of really light or a piece of really dark paper or something where you can more clearly see it. But we're gonna need to be able to see a visible line of bare clay at the very bottom of your piece while it's sitting on a flat surface. Make sure that you pack these pieces up very carefully in a box. Be especially careful of the rim when you're packing them up to take them back to Clark. Use plenty of softly crumpled newspaper. You can use old rags. I like to use old bath towels or old t-shirts to wrap my pieces in. You wanna pack them up very carefully and make your next appointment to drop them off at Clark to be glaze fired.